With the current console generation and all of its drawbacks, PC gaming is on the rise. There are many of you out there who are confused when it comes to PC gaming. Console fanboys and corporations would have you believe that building your own PC is expensive and a waste of time, not to mention that it's confusing. Well, I'm here to help clear up some of those allegations and help you decide on how to go about picking your first graphics card. What's up guys, it's Neriku here, back at it again with yet another video. I'm hoping that this video is helpful to you in explaining the importance of a graphics card, also called the GPU, and how to pick one for your gaming PC setup. This process is actually quite easy after knowing more about them. It makes it a whole lot easier for you to first decide your budget and your build, and with that said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So first question would be, what is a graphics card? The definition of a graphics card is this, a printed circuit board that controls the output to a display screen. So in other words, it's a component of a computer that has a single purpose, to make things display on your screen. Many home computers actually don't contain a separate graphics card. Instead, they use what is known as integrated graphics in order to display data on screen. Integrated graphics uses the CPU resources to display visual data instead. That's probably why your mom's Dell can't handle games very well. A graphics card features three major components, a processor, RAM, and a BIOS chip that determines the input-output data. These components are attached to the main board on the card that fits into a PCIe slot on your motherboard. There are two major things that concern you here, the processor clock speed and the memory bus or the size available for the RAM on your graphics card. Many gaming GPUs have about 3 gigabytes of available RAM or more, but it's important to note the size needed for individual games. So what to look for? What else do you need to know about graphics cards? Many newcomers to building a PC or many new PC players don't actually know that a designated gaming style GPU needs an external power supply or a PSU. On a separate note, a graphics card is very important for gaming, but keep in mind that not just any CPU will get the job done. Sure, more GPU intensive titles such as Overwatch, Fortnite, Call of Duty, and Battlefield can pretty much run on any CPU that has a good GPU combined with it, but games like GTA 5 or The Witcher 3 need a very beefy CPU um, that's more so than a potato and when I mean my very beefy it doesn't have to be top of line but it has to be something more than a dual core Dell processor from 2006. When the GPU and the CPU are imbalanced the term is called bottlenecking. This is when the CPU and GPU are not equally matched creating a disconnect between the two major components. While this is not dangerous it can create some problems when trying to achieve a buttery smooth frame rate. This is why you don't see people with an NVIDIA Titan X, for example, using a 10-year-old CPU. It just doesn't make any sense. Instead, try to better balance your two components by picking two parts that are no more than three years apart from the manufacturer date. How does a graphics card differ from a CPU? Well, according to NVIDIA, the CPU, or central processing unit, has often been called the brains of the PC. But increasingly, the brain is being enhanced by yet another part of the PC, the graphics card which is its soul. I know it sounds cheesy, but this is what NVIDIA writes. All PCs have chips that render display images to monitors, but not all these chips are created equal. Intel's integrated graphics controller provides basic graphics that can display only productivity applications like Microsoft PowerPoint and low resolution video and basic games. The GPU is in a class by itself. It goes far beyond basic graphic controller functions and is a programmable and powerful computational device in its own right. So basically, what it's saying is that it boils down to this. Sure, a GPU and CPU are similar, but they target very specific functions. Think of it as a role of specialization. The CPU handles major mathematical computations to work out a process or a command, whereas the GPU works out mathematical computations that order geometry, shaders, textures, and visuals. Make sense? How a graphics card affects gaming. Okay. A graphics card is used in the gaming process to process all your on-screen data, your textures, your shaders, and assets. It does this in a way that I don't fully understand, nor do I want to get to in this video. But um, what is important for you to understand is a unit that a graphics card is measured by called T-flops or a teraflop. So what is a teraflop? A T-flop is a bit of a shorthand for the word teraflop, which is a way of measuring the power of a computer based more on mathematical capability than a gigahertz. A teraflop refers to the capability of a processor to calculate one trillion floating point operations per second. Saying something has six teraflops, for example, means that the processor setup is capable of handling six trillion 
floating point calculations every second on average. So basically, if I had to dumb it down and make it as simple as possible, in other words, a T-flop or teraflop is the horsepower measurement for a processor. Ideally in this situation, the graphics card. Basically, the more T-flops you have, the more gaming power you can get, more or less. If you have a sufficient CPU to support the GPU, then you're golden. However, if you don't, that's known as a bottleneck, which we talked about earlier. Check the minimum spec requirements per game to get a better idea of the amount of power you need before deciding to buy a GPU or before building your PC in general. You can find GPUs online. Uh, my primary source for news on computer part releases is Google or YouTube. Be careful though because some sources are biased as to which graphics card manufacturers they like more. In this case, it would be uh, AMD versus Nvidia, although Intel is rumored to be joining the battle soon enough. So how to compare graphics cards? Well, we all don't have infinite budgets, and which means that we can't individually buy each of them and compare them. But luckily, GPU Boss does. I use their website to compare things like benchmarks and performance beyond the spec sheet. You can easily go to their website, type in the model of GPU versus another, and although it doesn't tell the complete story, it's a great way to help make a more informed decision. So for any gaming based build you need to actually select the graphics card. An easy way to do this is by knowing the tier and budget that you have for your build in mind. So say you want to build a entry level budget oriented build. If I were you, I would check out the AMD RX 570, maybe even the Nvidia GTX 1050 or GTX 1060. The price for the total build will be somewhere around $500 or less depending on your components to complete the build. Say you wanted to look at a mid-tier build, then you would be inclined to look at AMD's RX 580 or AMD's Vega 56. On the other hand, Nvidia holds strong with a comparable GTX 1070, 1070 Ti, or even a older GTX 1080. The price for a mid-tier build should be somewhere around $800 more or less depending on your choice of components once again. Don't quote me on this because prices for each and every component go up and down, so it's not a rock solid price, but you get the idea. Last but not least would be a high tier build. This is the tier that each person thinks that you need for gaming, but this is not true. High tier is used for more than just 4K gaming over 60 FPS. It's often the target class of a PC build for content creators as having more high performance machines means cutting down render times, for example. So for this, I would consider the AMD Vega 64. Make sure you guys skip the Founders Edition, you don't need that one. Or Nvidia's GTX 1080 or a Titan X. This will put your budget well over $1,300, but it would all be money well spent in the end. But let's be real here, you don't need this for a gaming tier PC at all. Like anything would work fine, budget build, mid tier, or even high, but you don't need the high tier build if all you're gonna do is play Overwatch and PUBG anyways. So if I had to recommend a graphics card to you, it's not the easiest question, but I would recommend something probably from the mid tier because you can grow into it. What I mean by that is if you have a budget build PC, but you have a mid tier graphics card, then you can over time upgrade your components to match the same power of a mid tier card. Also, if you have a high tier build, but you have a mid tier graphics card, you probably don't want that, um, that imbalance there, but let's just say that that were the case, then you wouldn't be outperforming your graphics card too much anyway, so you'd be okay. So at the time of this video on Team Red or AMD, I would recommend the Vega 56. And that is a good mid-tier card that's going to be able to get everything you need as far as performance for games out of the way. And it's going to be able to handle um, slightly better performance than a, a entry-level card for um, content creators. For Team Green or Nvidia, I would recommend the GTX 1070 Ti. The reason why I picked these cards is because they're similarly priced and they have about even performance. But if I had to be completely 100% honest with you, the GTX 1070 Ti is going to be a little bit better, but it's marginally, but a little bit better. If you want to go ahead and save 50 bucks, then go ahead and go with the AMD Vega 56. Alright guys, that's it for me. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing as I make new content on a consistent basis. If you want to know more about graphics cards, then the links to the websites and my research will be linked in the description below. Also, there are a few graphics cards listed in the description below to help you get started with your search and with your own research. With that said, I'm Neriku, and I will see each and every one of you weird AF mofos in the next video. Peace.